Well, in southern New Mexico, federal officials have confirmed that a local nuclear plant is leaking waste and releasing radiation into the surrounding area. The waste isolation pilot plant was leaking for days before State Environmental Secretary Ryan Flynn found out about it. Health officials insist that the plant poses no danger to the public. A statement to RT reads, quote, The New Mexico Environment Department has seen no data to suggest any health threats to people have, uh, have confer, uh, occurred as a result of the February 14th incident that led to a release of radiation outside the waste isolation pilot plant. However, it could take weeks for crews to get underground to the dump to try to figure out how it happened in the first place. This plant is the nation's first underground nuclear repository in the U.S. For more on this alarming story and for a look at some of the other nuclear stories that are taking place around the world, I was joined earlier by Paul Gunter. He's the director of the Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear, and I first asked him how widespread the problem in New Mexico really is. Well, uh, the Waste Isolation Pilot Project is uh, an, a deep geological repository. It's our only deep geological repository in the United States that houses um, nuclear waste, primarily plutonium, from the nuclear weapons program. And it's licensed for 10,000 years, but this uh, uh, facility now, after 15 years of operation, well, we've, we're evidencing now uh, what originally was reported as a fire uh, underground, but now we're, uh, the university um, system at uh, New Mexico State University is saying that they have detected plutonium contamination a half a mile uh, away from the site. So we have a nuclear accident that has uh, occurred deep down underground, but has now the contamination surfaced. Uh, into the atmosphere. So the environmental department says that all is safe. Should people take them at their word? No amount of plutonium, if you ingest it, if you, particularly if you inhale it, is a safe amount. So um, the fact that the uh, that plutonium contamination is now being picked up in surface monitors, you know, it represents a public health and safety concern. Now, something that you mentioned is that this is obviously one of the only places, the only place really, that stores this underground. Do you think that it makes it more or less dangerous because it is being stored underground? Well, if, you know, this is the only uh, long-term management strategy that we have for nuclear waste. But clearly, what we now see is a communication between an underground accident, probably through the ventilation systems, that has now brought radioactivity escaped into the atmosphere and is being picked up by monitors. Um, you know, the the idea of trying to uh, isolate nuclear waste for tens of thousands of years. Um, is really daunting and you know it's not really good science it's really about you take these things on faith that um, it will remain contained but we've lost containment now so would we have been better off if this was above ground could we have contained this a little bit better I don't think that there's any reliable method for long-term management of high-level nuclear waste or plutonium which represents a biological threat for 240,000 years. Clearly, this is a man-made hazard that will force uh, a, a hazard on future generations without any any benefit. It's all liability. So let's talk about the announcement. It took a few days before they finally announced that there was radiation that was found outside of that building. What took so long? Is that the standard process? Well, part of the problem was that the Department of Energy denied access to the uh, New Mexico State University Independent Monitoring Group. And so uh, it's been, uh, you know, a game of catch up now where uh, the independent monitoring is, uh, is, you know, had didn't have early access into the site. So that's part of the problem that uh, the information uh, has been withheld essentially by the government for days now. But it, it's going to be days, weeks, months, even longer to understand the full scope of this accident. What was the reason for withholding them? I'm not sure why the Department of Energy denied access to the uh, independent monitoring group. Very interesting. Now, meanwhile, the Obama administration sources say that the president finalized a $6.5 billion loan deal to build the country's first nuclear reactors um, in more than 30 years. So it's been decades. Why are they considering building new nuclear reactors now? Well, this is uh, part of an ongoing 
uh, juggernaut uh, that the nuclear industry has been, you know, looking to uh, revive itself. They, they called it a renaissance. In fact, it's a relapse to the same economic failure uh, that stopped this industry dead in its tracks 30 years ago. Clearly, what uh, this uh, Department of Energy federal loan demonstrates is that it takes the federal taxpayer uh, to be the guarantor on a uh, these these nuclear projects with in particularly in the case with the Vogel plant in Georgia the ratepayer has to finance the loan so the uh, nuclear industry has absolutely no skin in this game it's taxpayer and ratepayer risk for a project that has probably um, more than a 50 percent chance of failure now, when the uh, uh, Fukushima Daiichi power plant had all of those problems, I remember articles coming out criticizing the current state of American nuclear power plants. What is the current state of power plants? Should that money be better served uh, updating ones that are currently in use? Well, I, you know, there is a concern that the these older nuclear power plants, like the Fukushima-style reactors, um, they are they're, these GE reactors, uh, like Fukushima Daiichi, are now more than 40 years old, and um, the operators, like Exelon or Entergy, uh, are looking to put less money, less maintenance. Um, and power up the reactors at the same time. So, uh, you know, we're seeing uh, a decrease in the maintenance and oversight of these aging reactors so that the utility can protect its profit margins. And, uh, and it, these, are, these plants are very fragile economically as well. Uh, they don't compete anymore. And so, you know, Profit margins, financial margins are being put against public health and safety margins, and, and that's an increasingly dangerous venture. And finally, let's talk about what's going on in Japan three years after that plant had this catastrophic shutdown. Um, right now, they are starting to let 30,000 residents kind of go back, and they're going to go back after a two-year process. But at the same time, there's reports of new leaks. The latest one was 3,175 gallons of highly contaminated water spilled. Would you go back if you were one of the residents that was living there? Uh, these are uh, essentially permanent uh, isolation zones um, that will represent a biological hazard. Uh, you know, I th clearly, uh, Japan is a very small island, and uh, they have space problems. And so the government is essentially uh, lifting uh, restrictions when, in fact, the, the radioactivity uh, that has got out of that plant and continues to escape containment represents a threat that should be widening the evacuation zones. That was Paul Gunter, director of the Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear.